let me ask you a question. What truly makes a film so bad it's good as opposed to just plain bad? What is the secret formula for making a movie go from being an awful pile of flaming garbage to a beloved mess instead? Well, I'd say it's a combination of low quality, bizarre filmmaking decisions, and above all else, the movie taking itself far, far too seriously. This brings me, of course, to Jupiter Ascending, a movie that wanted to tell an epic space opera story and uh, didn't do a very good job. It's almost kind of sad watching a movie so convinced of its own brilliance when, in reality, it merely found itself joining the long list of so bad it's good cult classics. With all that said, it's time to properly talk about it. What went wrong with Jupiter Ascending? Oh, and uh, for the record, spoilers ahead this time. Jupiter Ascending is set in a world just like ours, except it's being secretly farmed and harvested by some alien royal family who want to raise and use humans to create some kind of magical youth immortality serum. However, after their queen dies, the royals learn that somewhere on Earth there's a human whose genetics, for some unexplained reason, perfectly match the queen's. The movie focuses on this particular character, a woman named Jupiter Jones. She is, despite her amazing name, quite possibly the most boring woman on Earth. Not only does she have zero personality, but her reaction to all the extraordinary things that happen to her tend to be nonchalant boredom. The Wachowski sisters claim that their aim with Jupiter was to create a strong female character who isn't action-oriented, but rather uses her wits to solve problems. And that is a pretty cool idea, and one I could get behind, had it been done well. Jupiter accomplishes virtually nothing throughout the entire movie, aside from stalling long enough for the male heroes to save her. Her not-son at one point even points out how ignorant she is. Heck, this is the woman who, when trying to bandage a wound with a sanitary pad, it tries to use the adhesive side. But you know what? I could forgive her complete lack of accomplishments or agency or worth in the story had she simply been a fun, interesting character to watch. But she's not. She is nothing more than a MacGuffin. You could replace her with some kind of magic contract that determines who rules the Earth and very little of this story would actually change. When a character's greatest accomplish can be best summarised as being born, then it's hard to really get behind them as our hero. It's like they took a bland, boring action girl protagonist and just removed the action part, leaving us with an equally bland, boring protagonist, except completely useless. Her only worth to the story is her supposed perfect genetics, because yeah, that's something to be proud of, and uh, her ability to control bees. Not an army of robot bees programmed to follow her or anything like that, just regular bees that have the ability to recognise royalty. But does she at least make good use of this power? No. But as well as Jupiter, we also have the love interest who helps her out in her quest to save the Earth from her evil, not children. Yeah, I'll get to them later. So, meet Cain, a dog-man hybrid thing who, of course, rather than having a cool design that actually reflects that, is just Channing Tatum with pointy ears, because we couldn't possibly have the love interest not be eye candy now, could we? He also has a friend named Stinger, who is Sean Bean, but part B. Yes, a half-dog man whose best friend is part B, who travels around on flying roller skates. I can't help but ask myself how this movie didn't realise just how dumb it truly was, and why it didn't just go with it. 
Kane has been tasked with finding Jupiter to return her to her not son, Titus, so that not son can manipulate her into giving up the Earth. But then she gets kidnapped by not daughter, who explains the situation. And it turns out there's a third not child who's after her, Balaam, played by Eddie Redmayne. If you've ever encountered Jupiter Ascending, you've probably come across this character. I'm not sure if Eddie Redmayne legitimately thought he was being an intimidating villain, or if he actually did see just how ridiculous the movie was and decided he just didn't care anymore. This character is trying so, so hard to come across as evil, and yet this consists of speaking with a raspy voice and constantly switching between whispering his lines and screaming them. I create life! And I destroy. As though that is in any way intimidating. Also, guess what? Turns out the original queen was murdered. Gee, I wonder who that could have been. Surely the character most trying to convince us he's evil could not possibly be the answer. Surely he's just a red hair. No. No, he did it. It doesn't even feel like a, oh, the most obvious answer is actually correct twist. Because when he admits to it, it actually feels like the movie intended to have this come across as shocking. The story follows Jupiter as she gets captured by both Titus and then Balaam, who both want to take over the Earth, and both times she has to get rescued by Cain. Wow, what a strong female character, getting repeatedly kidnapped and rescued and not even showing an ounce of charisma while doing so. To the point where, once she's finally free to be Queen of the Earth, she decides to go back to being a toilet cleaner. So, while the characters are weak and the movie is taking itself far too seriously, and I should also point out that the story is far too long and drawn out, I have to ask, is there a positive to be found here? Well, no matter how much I've trashed this movie, I really need to point out how good the art direction is. The visual effects and design are brilliant. The look and aesthetic of the various worlds and different aliens are actually beautiful. It really gets across the point that this film really did have potential, and that's kinda sad. This could have been a new original film series for us to enjoy, had they simply revamped the script and not cast Eddie Redmayne. And speaking of revamping the script, well, if that's what went wrong, just how would I put it right? Honestly, there is one thing, one thing this movie needs to change in order to make it good, and that is the tone. Instead of trying to be a super serious space opera, this film should have just embraced its dumbness and instead been written as a full-on sci-fi B-movie. Just make it a loving tribute to the equally silly sci-fi B-movies of the 50s and 80s. I mean, your love interest is a dog man on flying roller skates. Turn him from being an angsty tough guy action hero to an awesome, overconfident space heartthrob guy. Turn Jupiter from a bland cardboard cutout to a sweet ditty girl who actually goes through character development and learns to be a proper queen. Have Balaam be the evil overlord and keep him happy and over the top, but not as angsty and desperate to seem creepy and evil and maybe don't cast Eddie Redmayne. The original movie is a sad example of something that's too dumb to be taken seriously, but not quite dumb enough to be so charmingly silly that we forgive it. Rather than removing the dumbness, I'd say just go all out with it. Stranger Things proved that there is still a market for 80s nostalgia, so heck, why not set it in the 80s? Give Jupiter an overblown hairdo and give it an 80s soundtrack, just go all out. In the same way that Pacific Rim was a loving, over-the-top tribute to kaiju movies and mecha anime, make this film a tribute to trashy sci-fi B-movies of the 20th century. 
a dumb movie that knows it's dumb but does the job anyway will always beat out a dumb movie that's convinced it's smart and is trying to hide its dumbness. And that is ultimately the lesson to be learned from Jupiter Ascending. If you're writing a story, always consider the tone and whether or not you're taking it too seriously. If your story involves a useless woman being constantly rescued by a dogman on flying roller skates, maybe stop and consider that your story is going in a pretty silly direction. And yeah, sometimes it's okay to embrace that and present a story that's just meant to be dumb fun. And that, my friends, is precisely what went wrong. Thanks for watching the video. I know a lot of people really do enjoy this movie, um, but personally, as I say, I think it would have been more enjoyable if it had just gone all out with its silliness. But what are your thoughts? Be sure to let me know down below. Like, share and subscribe and all that jazz, and I hope to speak to you again soon. Goodbye!